Hi, I'm Ruan and this is my channel, um, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. Um, this is video number three so far. Um, and again, I've had some really lovely comments on my last two videos. So I just wanted to say a big thank you if anybody's joining, if anybody's subscribed. I've got a few subscribers, which is really nice. Um, my eldest son thinks I'm really cool because I'm getting more subscribers. So I'm really happy. Although he has mentioned to me quite a few times that the people that he watches have over a million. But, you know, hey, we can't aim for too much now, can we? <laughs> right, so um, today I'm going to be going over um, what I made in October and what my plans are for November. Um, didn't actually make a lot in October, I only made two pieces, but I think that's probably because they were a bit more detailed for something that I would normally um, make. Um, yeah, a few more steps to them, a little bit out of my comfort zone. So um, I'll talk you through those. Um, what I'm wearing today is the um, Jennifer Lauren gable top in a lovely French terry from Guthrie and Garney, um, which is just beautiful. I absolutely love it and I wear it all the time. It's, I love the neck on this. I just think it's really nice how it sits. It's really quite flattering. So it's quite high up, which is really nice for weather like this. I mean, my lighting is shocking. I've had to put my lights on because it is so grey outside today. <laughs> Bear in mind, I live in Yorkshire, so you know, we're kind of used to that thing, but hey. So the first thing I made in October, well, one of the two things I made in October was the Tilly and the Buttons Ariel skirt, which is here. And I made it in this really lovely, um, I don't know if that's called, is it dog's tooth or hound's tooth when it's that big? I'm not really sure, but it's like kind of like a, a woolly texture. Um, phrase like mad nightmare. Um, but what I did with this is um, before I even started constructing it, I overlocked every single one of my pieces. A um, little bit time consuming, but well worth it because then I didn't have to worry about it all the way through the construction process. So I was really, really pleased. Um, it came up really, really well. I had no issues with it. I never have any issues with Tilly and the Buttons. I always think they're really, really good, simple patterns. Um, and I chose to line it because you can choose to line it or not line it. And I lined it in this oh, kind of fuchsia cerise type pink um, satin type lining fabric that I'd got from Fabwick ages and ages ago. So it was quite good for me. I've only ever done lining in um, one thing that I do when I made something, sorry, in one of my sewing classes. So I've been sewing for six years now and I started off by going to the lovely Jessica's sewing um, sessions in Leeds um, just as a on a beginner's course um, to see if I liked it really. I've been watching the sewing bee fully enough um, and really like the idea of it and I kind of picked it up mainly for crafting things like that. I was more thinking I'd be making bunting and gift bags and all that type of thing, makeup bags and stuff. Um, but then once I'd kind of learned on my sewing beginners course, I booked onto another course. I think it was a button, a button back top. I can't even remember what pattern it was. It's that long ago. Um, and when I realised I could actually make garments, that was it. I was hooked. Um, and I had a really um, basic sewing machine. Um, and then I upgraded about six months later because the, the foot pedal on, on my um, cheaper machine wasn't working properly and I bought it from John Lewis and they were fantastic but they didn't have any left so they said well you can kind of put the money towards upgrading if you want <laughs> go on then <laughs> why not John Lewis is telling me to upgrade why wouldn't I um, so that's what I did so yes yeah, so I kind of got into making clothes then and then I booked onto another course and another course and I got to the point where I was going every single Wednesday um, for a couple of hours every Wednesday evening with a lovely group of, of um, ladies um, who are known as the Wing It Wednesday gang if any of you are watching um, um, but we haven't been sewing now for a year together because the lovely Jessica keeps them um, having babies I mean it's just selfish really isn't it outrageous um, and then obviously Covid's hit so we've not been able to because we do work in quite a confined space um, so hopefully when all of this has settled and Jess has had her third baby, oh, three, 
um we'll all be able to get back together i really hope we can because it's just a lovely couple of hours every wednesday that i am um, i have to myself to be able to chat away with everybody and we don't really get an awful lot of sewing done to be honest just a lot of chatting but anyway but no, it was a really good construction this skirt i bought the fabric from um knitting and stitching show a year ago now um and i kind of didn't know what to make with it at the time i just bought it because i loved it so much and you can't go wrong with like a a traditional what do they call it heritage trend don't they when it's something like this um the only difficulty um like the lovely frugalissima mentioned is when you're trying to connect the lining curves um inside the skirt onto the facing but do you know what hey it's fine and i was really lucky because i didn't have to do any fitting with this skirt whatsoever i'm really lucky because tilly and the buttons measurements are very similar to my own um i sometimes have to grade out on the waist slightly but not much so i was really lucky because i didn't have to do anything and i will definitely make another one i quite fancy making the the mini version um rather than the long pencil skirt version but i'll try and pop a picture here i mean i might be randomly pointing to a door right now because um i'm trying to look to see if i can learn how to edit videos so i might there's either going to be a picture here or here who knows or i'm going to literally be pointing into the air who knows but if i can't do it if i can't learn how to edit it and shove a picture or whatever in here you can always go over and check my instagram account because i've put some photographs on there um and that's exactly the same tagline it's the yorkshire so girl so by all means head on over and have a look but i absolutely love it and i'll definitely be making more really really nice make as are all tillion buttons patterns aren't they um and then i decided to have a go at a coat now again, I have made a coat before, but it was on my sew in my sewing lessons. I've never finished it off. Um, I've never kind of had a go on my own um, at doing a coat. Um, so I wanted something that wasn't going to be too fitted, that I was going to have loads of fitting issues with and have to work things out. I wanted something quite almost boxy and oversized because that's the style I like at the moment anyway. Um, and if you watch my last video you will see that i ended up with some green leopard print wool fabric from fatworks which was absolutely beautiful so the coat i made was the tasuti oslo coat and this is my baby here she is oh yeah check me out i made a coat um so yeah as you can tell i'm ecstatic with this i sized down in this um because it is incredibly oversized for me. When I looked at the finished garment measurements, I kind of thought, mm, do you know what? That's a bit too much. So um, yeah, I sized down. I think I, I did I do mm, 12? I think I did a size 12. Um, and do you know what? It was a really good pattern to follow. There was a couple of head scratching moments, don't get me wrong. There was one point where I kind of thought, do you know what? I'm gonna have to I'm going to have to put this down and bring someone to help me because I can't get past this. So I gave it up. I went and had a cup of tea, like you do. And I came back and I did what my sewing teachers always told me to do. If you don't understand something, read it one sentence at a time. Not a full paragraph or whatever the action is to do on your sewing um, instructions. Just one sentence at a time. And make sure you understand every single word in that sentence. So I came back and that's what I did. And I realised that I was thinking I should be attaching something to the back piece rather than to the back facing piece. And as soon as I worked that out, bing. So yeah, so the instructions are really good. Um, it has pockets as well. Don't we just love pockets? And they've really, I've used um, Tasuti patterns before on the lease address and it's, um, they do the same pocket construction, which is really nice. It lies lovely and flat. And you can't even really see that it's there, which I quite like. And it doesn't then um, tend to, you know, stick out on the hips, which you know, none of us women want stuff sticking out on our hips, do we? Let's face it. So, yeah, really, really well done. Um, there was a couple of bits in the instruction. They've, they've done the instructions with a dark coloured fabric. Now, halfway through, when it gets even more complicated, they do change it to like a calico background so you can see a little bit easier but i think they should have done that maybe a few steps before because there's a few p 
points in it where you just can't really see by the pictures and I'm a really visual person um, so I really like those pictures and the only other thing that I would say is um, they don't tell you to finish your seams off which I understand loads of patterns don't loads of pattern companies don't I really like to have my hand held and I like to follow instructions to the precise word um, I'm not a fly by the seat of my pants kind of gal um, and I just thought it was really interesting that they were putting on the instructions um, backstitch at beginning and end you know and things like that really simple things but then they were saying finish your hem at this point so I'd constructed quite a bit of my coat before I twigged <clears throat> um, so I was really mad at myself so I spent quite a lot of time at my overlocker <laughs> trying to ram pieces through that had already been connected to a full coat with all the fact you can just imagine yeah I sweated quite a bit during that but overall I'm ecstatic I've got a lovely button that I also picked up from Fabworks which is like a really nice textured button and then it's got an anchored button inside as well just to make it lie flat um but again I'll try and insert some photos of me wearing it if I if I get a chance but if not head on over to my Instagram and hopefully um, you'll be able to see some there. Um, it's definitely my favourite make so far, ever. And I really want to make another one, so. Maybe one a year, what do we think? Is that acceptable? One a year, maybe? Why not? Um, and the other two things, I bought these specifically for making this because I've not had a tailor's hand before. And they're, you know, they're only about a tenner. Um, and a clapper, which I'd heard about as well, for wool garments to be able to lay your seams flat um, and keep the steam in there from the iron and I must admit I was kind of a bit dubious but it was absolutely brilliant it's really helped you know press all of the collar down flat and it's yeah I'm very happy with that very happy with I'm very proud of my little self to be honest right so November plans I do realize I'm already kind of a week into November um, and I'm probably being a bit ambitious because I want to make six things all together so I'm probably there might be the odd one that falls out of this but we'll wait and see you never know so majority of them are pretty easy ones so and I've got all the patterns cut out now um and I've cut a couple of the actual patterns out in the fabric so I'm doing all right I'm doing all right and I've started sewing one up this morning so who knows we shall see at the end of November whether I actually manage it or not so the first thing that I'm gonna make and I mentioned the fabric in my last um, video, which was a fabric haul. But the first thing I'm going to make is this. And it's some pyjamas for my two boys. So I've got um, a four-year-old and soon-to-be eight-year-old. And I wanted to just have a look for a really quick, easy pattern for pyjamas. Um, so I literally Googled it and this came up straight away. Um, had really good reviews. And it was really cheap. I think it was about £3 something for the pattern. Um, and because it's smaller sizes, to actually print it and stick it all together PDF-wise, it wasn't that bad. Um, so this is uh, made by me patterns. So I've actually bought a couple of other patterns from um, them as well. A sweatshirt one and a hoodie one that I might do eventually as well. Um, and these are going to be for my boys' Christmas pyjamas. <laughs> so one of them will be made up in this gorgeous cotton jersey. It's got like geometric rainbow holly leaves and berries on it. And the other one is a navy background with the trees on it, which are beautiful. These were from first for fabrics. And then I'm going to do all the cuffing in red for both because I just think that'll it'll set it off really nicely, hopefully. Um, I didn't have enough red um, ribbing from first for fabrics, so I've just ordered some more just to make it up. But yeah. So I think my boys will like that. I hope they do, because it's like one of the first things that I'm making for someone else if they don't like it. I ain't doing it again. I'll just make for myself. Um, another thing that I'm not making for myself, oh, check me out, is I'm going to make another Mandy Boat Tea by Tasuti. This is a free pattern. I think I've mentioned it on one of my other videos. And I've made it in a red viscose jersey before. And it's beautiful. It's got really you know dropped sleeves I love it in stripe because I really do think you can make a feature of how the stripes work it's got a really nice slash neck as well 
um, and it's so easy to put together. It's it's brilliant. And I think in a viscose jersey, it hangs really nice. So it's quite boxy. Um, I think I'm going to shorten this one a little bit because mine's quite long. I prefer it short, but I am making it for my mum for a Christmas present. And that is going to be in this beautiful viscose jersey that I purchased from Guthrie and Garney. So this has got my mum's name written all over it. Oh, so it's like a navy with a little pink, little pink flowers, different coloured flowers on it. So I think that will look beautiful. And then I'm potentially going to make something for in December that will go with that. But I'll talk about that some other time. It's just in the planning stages right now. So we shall see. Now, this one is for me. Um, this was the one that I couldn't resist when there was a discount code um, at La Marzi Fabrics. And it's that art gallery jersey that I've also mentioned on my fabric haul. Um, normally I buy quite a bit of fabric and then it sits in my stash for a little while while I'm working it all out. But I think everything that I'm making now is from my most recent purchases. Um, I, I really cannot wait to get this one made up but I'm making myself make the pajamas for my boys and the top for my mum before I'm allowed before I'm allowing myself to do it but I'm going to make the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes um which is a pattern that I absolutely adore and I think I'm gonna do puffy sleeves but the long version like I've done um I did the puffy sleeves on another version I'm gonna do long puffy sleeves I think and I don't know whether to do this neckline or not as well. Do we think that's going to be too much with puffy sleeves and that little neckline? I don't know. You can have a think about that anyway. But I cut the size six out of that one and everything fitted no problem. So I'm going to be doing that again. And then oh, another Tilly in the Buttons pattern, which is the new Lotta one. Um, so... I wasn't particularly sure about this pattern. Um, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, mm, I don't really think it's me, but I've seen that many really good um, versions of it. Um, I've just decided I'm gonna have to do it. Just wait a minute, my husband's sanding something in the background, just hang a banger. Let's just see if I edit this out or whether I just leave it in. He's happy. He's happy not to do it quite quite yet. It's literally out there sanding. That's all I can hear. Someone sanding in the background. Is there any need? Whatever time it is. No. Anyway, might edit that out. Might not. It's real life, isn't it? So yeah, so I saw loads of people uh, making this and absolutely fell in love with it. I still don't know if it's going to suit me or not, but do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. And I'm going to give it a go with this crepe. I think it's crepe. I can't really remember now. I think it was from Rainbow Fabrics. I think loads of other people have had it in different colourways. So I've seen a lot of green of this one, but I really liked the blue. I thought that'd look really nice, but I'm also thinking, is it going to be really staticky on my legs if I've got tights? Hmm, don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go for the size six again, I think, on this one. And I know it's kind of autumn winter coming into but i think i'm actually gonna go for the shorter sleeve version and maybe bang a jacket or cardi on with it i don't know and i'll definitely go for the shorter version i'm not really a midi kind of i don't know maybe i should give it a go um i might just do the shorter version first see if it suits me and then i've got loads of this fabric so i can't imagine that'd be a problem but if anybody thinks i might have an issue with this type of crepey fabric then do let me know because I don't re really make many dresses, so I'm kind of venturing into the unknown. So any advice about this would be beneficial. Thank you very much. And then last but not least, I want to make a new pattern that I've bought. Again, I've seen loads of people with these and it's the Sew House 7 um, toaster sweater. So there's two different versions on this one. There's one with um, huge cuffs and a large neckline. 
and a band at the bottom or there's this one here which is just a high neck and it's got the split hems at the side which I really really like that style so I think I'm gonna do version two that's the plan do you know I'm not a massive jumper sweater person um but I keep seeing so many people with them um on Instagram and they just all look so good so I'm like I need to make myself into a jumper kind of gal so that's what I'm working on at the moment a few jumpers to see if I can change my mind and I'm going to make it with this amazing jacquard knit that I got from I think this was in uh so 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 UK and it's really it's got it's got a nice element of stretch, but it's also quite structured, which I think will work well because it's quite a boxy style, particularly with the split hem. I'm going to want something that's got a little bit of um, structure to it so that it, it holds that hem at the bottom. Um, but as you can see, I've already started cutting this one up and I, I had a few moments on it this morning. Couldn't help myself. I know I said I was going to make the kids pyjamas and stuff first, but hey, hey. Nobody needs to know, do they? No. So yes, yeah, so that's five things. Is it like one, two, three, four, five, six things if you count the fact I'm doing two sets of pajamas? Yeah. Um, but five patterns. Um. So yeah, I might be a bit, a bit adventurous, but why? Why not? We're in lockdown. I've no social life right now, so might as well give it a go. You know, normally I'm quite a social butterfly and I'm out all the time, so I never get a chance to make anything. It's probably the only reason I'm doing this, really, is because I don't get to go out now, so I need to fill my time with something um, other than getting smashed by my kids at Ludo and Monopoly, which seems to be the case at the moment. So, yeah, um, yeah, head over to my Instagram if you want to have a look at some of these photos, if I don't manage to. I know, I'm just putting fingers everywhere. <laughs> it's probably not going to be any photos there. But we'll wait and see. You never know, you look in a drawer. Um, yeah, and I will be back soon with another video, no doubt, to show that I've only made two things out of this list, but we'll see. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. I'm really sorry I've rambled on. Um, really sorry you've had to see my arse as I've gone out there to tell my husband to stop sanding, but you know, this is real life, isn't it? And hey, that's that's what happens in Yorkshire. <laughs> He's absolutely ecstatic. He's probably down there drinking a beer now because I've told him he doesn't need to do all that sanding. I'm going to have to go get him now, aren't I? And make him do it anyway. Whoosh. Thanks for listening, guys. And hopefully I will speak to you all soon. Bye.